Now, welcome everybody back to the channel, another Swiss 001 video, and in today's video, we are back on board our beloved Concorde. And you know, I think it's safe to say that the Concorde is pretty much humanity's most favorite aeroplane. I mean, who hates the Concorde? Maybe Greta Thunberg does, but who cares about her these days? Anyway, we all can say that we love the Concorde, but... <laughs> I'm pretty sure we can all agree on the fact that this is probably one of the hardest planes to fly ever. I mean, l look at that engineering panel right here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this, is, it's just, this plane never ceases to amaze me with its complexity and we're crashing right now. Talking about that, this plane is also pretty hard to maneuver. Yes, yeah, so you need to be quite skillful of a pilot to land a Concorde properly. I mean, first of all, let's talk about the speed that we're on right now. We're at 190 knots, which for the Concorde may just be even a little bit too low for speed. Yeah, you know, with the Delta wing design, you cannot really fly very slowly. Not a lot of lift. Anyone that's coming for a bit of a landing now? Something like that here at Geneva Airport here in Switzerland. Come on. Yes. There we go. As you can tell, that actually went quite smoothly, but something you might have noticed is that there were no GPWS callouts. You know, from the Butter song, for example. 150, 40. 30, 20, 10. No, none of that is actually here. We're just not making it much easier to land this plane, honestly. But still, I think the standing has gone quite well. Even though we might have struck that tail a little bit. You know, we've got this tail landing gear as well, which was, you know, specifically designed because most pilots would struck the tail of this plane, which actually I did here as well. But here we go. That's been a all right of a landing. But yes, I think we can all agree again. Concorde, not easy to land. But of course, the Concorde has a solution for that as well. This is, after all, a rather smart plane, even though it came out in 1969. And what well, the answer to our big problem of landing the plane lays right in front of us. Autoland. Yes. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, that's really when the first planes to have auto land came around. You know, with the introduction of ILS systems to be installed at airports. For example, Geneva Airport also has an ILS CAT 3 system, which enables for full auto land. So you know what? Let's do this. Let's have the Concorde land itself. All right. So welcome back on board our Concorde. We're back on the air and we're right now coming in for a landing at Geneva Airport. It's uh, right in front of us, actually. As you can see, this is our route. Now, since we want to do an auto landing, we, of course, have to configure the plane to do that, first of all. So I've already turned on the autopilot right now. It's just holding the heading and the altitude. Things are looking good. Now, of course, in order for the plane to receive ILS signal here from Geneva Airport, we have to enter the frequency of the ILS Cat 3. We're just given right here on the instrumental flight rules chart right here. This is the one. 108 decimal 7. I've already entered it right here. And now we need to enter it here in the inertial navigation system and put it to active. There we go. Let's turn this now on and see if we can receive anything. And yes, we do. Now down here we have the glide slope, for example. And that one says that we're a little bit too low. We too low. Let's go ahead and so, um, you know, level off here at this altitude and wait for this needle to come back down. Meanwhile, we're just going to wait for the localizer to come on as well. Now, let's meanwhile, slow the plane down. We do this now with these little cute 1969 dials. You know, I'm so fascinated by this because after all, this computer that's built into the autopilot has like how many megabytes of storage, right? You know, this is so crazy. I mean, you know, this is also what I'm wondering about with a moon landing. How did they land rockets on the moon with that kind of computing power? Anyway, our runway is down here and let's come in for a landing therefore let's turn on the auto land yes come on yes and we can even see this auto land symbol eliminate and um i guess let's just wish this autopilot good luck right auto land you know what for kicks and giggles let me just disconnect my joystick right here good and that's just you know for proof that i'm not the one landing the plane it's really the plane that's landing itself everybody the concord auto landing let's see i'm gonna watch this just from the outside view looking rather good so far not very much on the center line though right okay that's been a bit of a hard landing barely on the runway but there we go everybody we have landed the car no, it's not us but it's the concord who's all right now it's turned into a bit of a pegasus situation 
Here we go, though. Yes, sir, buddy. I mean, what a moment, honestly. The Concorde seriously, you know, landed itself. Not very smoothly or anything. But of course, that's just an enormous technical feature that the Concorde has, or at least used to have. You know, especially when it comes to landing in bad weather conditions like fog. And uh, we have blown the tires. I'm sorry. Yeah, but as you can see, the autopilot is not the strongest of arms. It'll get the plane down somewhat. But it definitely wouldn't trust it to fly the plane down onto the runway in harsh weather conditions. Right? Good, all right. Welcome to some very bad weather conditions indeed. And this is really proper bad now. In a storm, I'm just going to trust the plane to fly itself down to the runway. As you can see, the auto land is turned on. Now, something that does give us a little bit of an insight of how high we are above the ground is this indicator right here. This is literally the height indicator, which is a little bit of a replacement for the GPWS callouts, even though it doesn't go very into the detail, you know, below 100 feet. This is kind of cool, at least. So, at least we can now see how far we are away from dying. All right, passengers. While the autopilot is taking care of the landing plane, it is time for me to, you know, hand out some service right here. Got some champagne bottles here. That's kind of cool. Oh. oh. Well, this reminds me of something. I don't know what, though. All right, let me try this again now. I mean, come on, Concord. I thought you were better than this. Uh, Three, two, one, storm. Good. Now this is looking all right. Still, everything looking good. Don't mess this up, Concord, now. Come on. You know, something that's also kind of cool is that in the cabin, we are given out a... Stop that! You you crashed into the lake? That makes no sense at all! All right, I guess now we do have to monitor the plane a little bit more. Making sure it won't die, right? Now, judging by the map, we're actually getting closer and closer to that runway. This is finally looking all right. All right, don't die now. Everything's fine. Don't worry. Okay, you know what? Ah! Okay, oh, I'm taking over. I'm taking over the controls. Okay, never mind. All right, the plane was about to crash again, but actually, the thing is, this has now led us down to the runway, and we can now take over the control of the airplane. Shut up, autopilot. Let's come in for a bit of a landing. You know what? This is not all too bad. It has at least led us down to the runway. Now, by the way, something in this case, what the plane could also do, let me just turn it back on, is do an automatic go around. Here we go. Yes, what this will do now is give full power into the engines. It will now hold the center line of the runway like it should and just keep the nose up at like 15, um, you know, degrees of, of pitch. Now, after positive rate, we can put the landing gear up. This is like kind of, this is like really kind of cool. It's kind of like quick dial buttons that this thing has. Like we can also turn on max climb. So to climb as much as possible at 400, you know, knots. Yes, and we can see the beautiful afterburners turn on as well. Very smart aeroplane. I like the autopilot of this plane, which will now automatically maintain the altitude and just fly as fast as possible. Yeah, the afterburners are still turned on. Now, <clears throat> this mode will actually get the plane now to get its speed of 2.2 Mach or something like that, while also not getting the nose of the aeroplane too hot. So yeah, I'm just amazed by this autopilot. I mean, honestly, like, it's so smart. I mean, for the 1969s, right? Okay, it's crashed the airplane again. It's not that smart, but it's kind of smart. I love that. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, as always. Good night. Now, thank you to all my members here on YouTube, like Mike, Jacob, Tanner, Mubarak, Darren K, Oh Man, The Human, Robbie, Tim, Matt, Sleepy Boy, Calvin, Kelly Chaos, Ryland, Moritz, Jackie Boy, New the York, Shadow, Noah, and Death Rider.